Total League. Today we're going to have Shadow Forge Gaming versus Hardcore Pwn. Now these are two interesting teams. They both have uh, pulled out a win so far in this tournament, and it's because of their drafts, if you ask me. I mean, Shadow Forge Gaming pulling out the unexpected Naga Siren support, which you don't see very often at all. And then um, we had Hardcore Pwn. They got a jungler player. They got a, they had a Chen pulled out in their first game that they won against just some boys. Uh, two days ago so we'll see how these two uh temporary titans of the game is hard dota league match up today i'm actually looking forward to this one because everybody has some awesome names like spursmer and spurf and jack swift and brochen so <laughs> always good to see some fun names as a caster all right we're gonna get our first bands coming out you know we've Dyer's seen a lot band. of less shrek bloodseeker bands coming out I will see if that trend continues in this league or if they maybe switch it up maybe they want to ban out the gym there's the less shrek <laughs> Radiance it's like band. clockwork. Only he never gets banned anywhere. Oh, a wisp banned out. Maybe they, uh, they saw something from Shadow Forge that uh, you know they, they think they got that that wisp going. Uh, so far, they haven't played it in this league, but maybe they know something we don't know, or maybe they just don't want to deal with the wisp tiny or, or any of the relocate ganks that generally come with a wisp attached to it. Ten seconds to go. Undying. So two good, su two amazing support teams banned out already, and then some really good team fight uh, definers. So. Both sides looking to to control, it looks like, early on anyway. You know, I haven't seen a lot of push-heavy strats this um, patch, and uh, it's probably pretty safe not going to see any uh, out of Ten these guys seconds to go. as well. Because the, the push-heavy strats, it's taking too much farm. Okay, so there's the Gyrocopter band out. Another huge, huge team fight hero that has been doing really well in recent history. So, first pick coming out for Shadow Forge Gaming. Going to see how they... Uh, they look to go and maybe they'll pick up their offlane naga siren again you know throw out that fake you think it's going to be a, a core and it's just a support of course they they had the gyro last game as their main carry so they're gonna have to think of something new so we'll see how they, uh, they deal with go. that okay going with the queen of pain hey she's up for uh in a <laughs> an arcana against zeus right now so maybe we'll see zeus against her who knows <laughs> the queen of pain though is always a solid Dominator in the mid lane usually not doesn't there not a lot of people give the Queen of Pain trouble because of that blink out and the insane amount of damage that she does. So interesting first pick coming out for Shadow Forge Gaming. Okay, hardcore point. Radiance Since pick. they got the the two picks in a row, they're gonna pick up uh, the an amazing dazzle support and then the Viper, which Dyer's they ran pick. last time, I believe. If I'm not insane, which I might be, that's just me. Yeah, Hardcore Pwn, they ran the, the Viper as their main carry last time in their win against just some boys. Ancient Apparition picked up from Shadow Dyer's Forge. Ban. So Shadow Forge really shown uh, switching it up uh, comparatively with Hardcore Pwn. Someone's Hopefully uh, like oh, we lost somebody apparently from uh, what the Bastion announcer is telling me, but that's okay. Maybe they'll get back in. Hopefully it's not a drafter. As your team captains are going to be Spaceman, Spursman, Spurf on Hardcore Pwn, and Quantum on Shadow Forge Ten Gaming. Seconds to go. So uh, we'll see probably some more bands out to, uh, to you know, Five synergize seconds. with this. So with the AOE damage from Ancient Apparition, a lot of people like to put Disruptor with them. So you can get Disruptor, Deserve hold them in place. You get the AOE Ancient Apparition ult. They don't get any healing, and it's just a, a Fuster Cluck, which just messes people up. So wouldn't be surprised to see a ban out on the Disruptor. And plus... Uh, Ruptor has been a, a pretty common ban so far as he has such team fight uh, around him. But they're going to ban out the axe because they don't want that axe dunk taken away from any of Dazzle's shallow graves. It's the only way to really be positive that that shadow, shallow grave is going to be worth, you know, casting at all. Because with that axe there, all he does is dunk through the grave Radiant and you got nothing. Ban. Uh, ban out on the Chen. So Shadow Forge Gaming uh, banning out the the chin that they saw hardcore pwn run last time so they, they don't want that all healed they don't want to mess with the creep army uh because that creep army did some significant work last time took down i think almost was almost involved in go. every single tier one uh tower takedown so Five with the bat out on the chin that means the hardcore pwn might be reconsidering uh their whole strat because they used the jungle rather effectively last time because hardcore pwn didn't have they didn't have the best early game last time but they had the jungler and they had every every well, all of their lanes were keeping keeping up with uh, just some boys and they they actually ended up pulling out the win Radiant's they banned out the the phantom lancer uh the cancer lancer the ebola lancer whatever you want to call him it's always a solid ban because there's just nothing you can do to truly stop a rolling phantom lancer it's insane 
So with that, they're going to move into their next pick. Uh, they like Teamfight Heroes, so I wouldn't be surprised to see uh, maybe one of their Storm Spirit coming back or uh, the offlane Tidehunter that they, they last picked last time. Hell, maybe even uh, a Tusk. He's super Ten strong in this patch. Really, really good initiator. And, and with the mobility of getting the Five Viper seconds. in the, the Snowball with you, might not be some bad synergy coming out. And that would add Reserve another time. immunity, I guess. While they're in the Snowball, you can't hurt them. While they're Shallow Graved, you can't hurt them. Meanwhile, you're being ticked down by Viper Poison, so... Spaceman Spurf taking his time on this one, dipping into his reserve time by almost a minute so far. He's got uh, another few seconds before he goes all the way into it, but... Hardcore Pwn, they, they like to think it out, but uh, they don't want to feel like they're rushed, so... Let's see, let's see. Team Fight Heroes, that could be... Oh, there's so many good heroes in this patch. It's the Clockwork! One of my favorites ever. Okay, so, Dyer's like, there's big. that initiator team fighter role. Once he gets the blade mail, just pops it in. He can trap the Ancient Apparition on the, the back lines or any support, really. The only thing um, you don't like to see is when he hooks a Queen of Pain and she just blinks away, so... Not the best for ganking Queen of Pain. The only thing he's going to have to really worry about is this scream coming over his cogs, because he's kind of trapped there once he pops the cogs, and... Uh, so he needs to be Earthshaker. wary of that. They're going to pick up the Earthshaker for Shadow Forge Radiance Gaming. Pick. Now, Earthshaker, they picked up last time as one of their, their major supports. And let me tell you, this Earthshaker can do some, some serious work. Like, you get the, the clockwork hook in and then immediately stunned by the Earthshaker. You know, the Earthshaker can stop. He can really control the fights very well by putting up that barrier between everybody and everybody else and deciding who gets to be on what side of it and who gets destroyed. So uh, next coming up from Hardcore Pwn, wouldn't be surprised. Like I said, they need go. another... Uh, their clockwork is a pretty damn solid offlaner, so... Five seconds. If they don't decide to run the Viper mid, which they didn't last time. Last time they ran a, uh, a Storm Spirit time. mid, which when you have a Storm player who's good, you usually like to give them that Enchanted. Storm, but then instead they pick up their jungler, just like they did last Dyer's time with the Chen. Pick. Only they're going Enchantress this time. Next best thing to a Chen. You got your heal, you've got the domination of creeps and everything, and now she has that insane evasion, and with all of her buffs, she's a really solid pick right now. I actually like to see her a little bit over the chin because of the amount of damage she can do. Her only problem is that low, low, low health pool. So, responding to that, let's see if Shadow Forge Gamer picks up the, the, the typical bounty hunter Ten to try to harass to uh, junglers, and with as low health as en Enchantress has, the, the slow seconds. on attack, if you can get one good crit coming from that bounty hunter, it's usually a, a free kill, or at least Reserve follow her around time. to get some free experience. So we'll see how that works out. Maybe they'll uh, pick a jungler of their own. Since they, they banned out the Chen, but wouldn't be surprised to see an Enigma. Not a lot of high mobility other than the Enchantress on the side of Hardcore Pwn, of course, the hookshot. Uh, but, so you can bait them into coming around a corner, and then Black Hole, and then they all die. <laughs> so... Of course, they picked up both of their supports already, unless they're thinking of running a course shaker. There's that bounty hunter, see? Gonna be wander Radiance wandering around ban. and hunting down that enchantress, harassing her out of her, her nice, comfortable jungle farm. So, always a good pick. I love seeing bounty hunter. He just messes with the game so hard that you have to play completely differently. All right, Radiant Band coming out. They're gonna need to ban out some offlaners. Wouldn't be surprised to, to see a Legion. Nah, actually, Legion wouldn't be great this game. Um, let's Five see, Tidehunters. Solid ban when it comes to that sort of team fight. Um, Reserve time. Who's been playing? Oh, Phoenix or a Broodmother was never a bad ban, especially the Broodmother would. They don't have a lot to deal with the Broodmother right now, so they might want to consider banning her out. I mean, the only thing they have really is the the Dazzle Shadow Wave, but even that I don't think is going to be enough to save them from spiders early on. They have a lot of single target, but they're going to go with the. Uh, Sladar, an, an amazingly good band. With the armor break, it'll stop your Viper from being able to stand and fight. And you gotta have that Viper in the fight. So they, they bet out the, the armor breaking AoE stunning Slardar. So no fish man this time. So let's see if what the next ban out is gonna be for Shadow Forge Gaming. Maybe they Ten wanna ban out the go. other fish man. Get, <laughs> get that Slark out of there. Five so seconds. we'll see what they, they're going with here. Uh, if you're going up against a, a line up like Hardcore Pwn, you want something Reserve that has. Time. Uh, a little bit more control, because right now they have great damage. Okay, they just ban out the Bloodseeker. Don't want to deal with him, and they have Radiant's a carry left. Pick. And last pick, Bloodseeker is a hell of a thing to deal with. So they ban out the Bloodseeker, and that leaves Hardcore Pwn with a large variety of options. You can get an, a, you know, Ember Spirit, Storm Spirit, any mid, really. I wouldn't be surprised to see a Puck, though. Puck would be pretty good against that Queen of Pain with the, the AoE silences, the heavy damage. The only thing you'd have to worry about is the Scream Spam, which he can phase shift away from if, he's, if he times it correctly. 
So ten seconds to go. Mid laner coming out. They only have uh, seven seconds before they dip into their Five final seconds. thirty seconds of uh, of ban time. So we'll see how they uh, decide to end this up. All right. Reserve time. Dipping into that reserve time. Well, hopefully you don't come down to an auto pick. That would be horrible. But Shadow Fiend, never, never a bad mid laner. I mean, with the Radiant side as well, they can. Okay, they go with their their signature Storm Spirit. I'm gonna Dyer's call it signature dead. because I've seen it before. <laughs> All right, so the Storm Spirit, ready to rock, ready to take some faces off. And with that zipping around, he might be even be causing this Ancient Apparition and Earthshaker a little bit of trouble. But he needs to be very careful of the uh, the stun coming out from uh, Earthshaker. Okay, so Necrophos. Going to be the, the old pub, pub stomper of old. Not seeing him a lot lately, but he decided to um, play it dangerously and go with the Necrophos. Looking for that, that extra kill, because I guess they think if they can keep the cores down, then they got no team fight. So we got Quantum picking up the Bounty Hunter. Game is paused. Ambro Chen picking up his Earthshaker. Lobby <laughs> picking up his Ancient Apparition. Jack Swift on the Necrophos with his tote sweet hat. And Maggot going to be rocking the Queen of Pain for Shadow Fire Fiend. Shadow Forge Gaming. Ugh. All right. Uh, I'm getting muted. Kev Dog picking up his excellently played Storm Spirit. Yeah, Dazzle, going to be picked up by Bershka Dershka. Herb Salad. I said Herb because there's an H in it. It's picking up the clockwork. And Jesus was my dad. Enchantress. I guess Jesus had a little more interesting taste than recorded. And Spur Smurn Spurf on the Viper, which he dominated so hardcore with. Let's see. Kawaii AA. La, 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 la. All right, so... A lot of things happening in the chat that I don't quite understand, but there they are. So we're getting, getting off to a little bit of a pause as Earthshaker reconnects to the game. So we should be kicking it off pretty pretty soon here. Yeah. So, tactical pause already taken care of. And let's see how this rolls out. So, <laughs> People showing some love for Hydro Fire. The, uh, the admin here has been doing an excellent job so far. He's made this whole casting process extremely easy on the... Oh my goodness. Somebody's got a slurpy, slurpy, wingy dingies. What is happening here? Okay, unpause, coming out. All right, there we are. Getting started. Love the new uh, compendium well effect. It just looks kind of cool. The bottle effect makes it look like pee, but the, the, the fountain effect's got enough sparkles. So, Kev Dog, who's used to getting muted, gonna be going mid lane with the, the Storm Spirit. Clock off. No big surprises here. Aggressive try with the jungling Enchantress bottom. Meanwhile, safe lane, tr another aggressive try. What are they doing? Are they really sending the AA mid? Nah, they must be just going through the room. So, Bounty Hunter going to be rocking the off lane if he doesn't end up going into the the forest. The, I guess the, the jungle, as it were. So, Maggot getting ready to... Anybody level up anything yet? No, no teleport. No, nothing leveled up yet. Except for the stun on our shaker. Pretty solid choice there. You can't really flame that too hard. Uh, some blocking wards coming out from Herb Salad. Block that pull camp so that way they can't control their own base very well. He's got the wards on Quantum, but he hasn't found a really good place to put them yet. He's got his invisibility popped. He's scouting out, seeing what's going on in this bottom rune. They ping out the Dazzle. There we go. He's just going to do his own blocking of the mid camp for the, the Enchantress and the Shadow Fiend. Top. And they're off. Nope. Nobody's going to go in on this. They see everybody just decide to grab it. And then Spurf getting the, uh, the bottom rune. So. Storm Radiant going back to block his side. lane. Dire on the other. Aberration goes to do the same. Keep the uh, creep, creep relibly, the equilibrium of creep, creeps <laughs> all good to go. So we'll see. Lobby kind of staying here. He's going to he drops an aggressive ward so that uh, they can always have vision of this zippy around storm and then he's leaving maggot to go stack up some jungles in the stack up some camps in the jungle can't talk today all right this bounty hunter's already doing some harassment but Let's see herb salad see if he gets cut out he's leveled up flare so he's gonna be sticking back and trying to get some last hits that way and bro chen yeah, they're just dancing around each other for now all right so no the ward already given away the fact that it blocked the, the camp up there. Oh, no, not yet. Sorry. They get the first one is free. Remember, the first one's always free. <laughs> All right.
right, Jesus is my dad. Picking up a, a Seder Tormentor. Never a bad pickup, because you can always stack camps with the, the, the Shockwave, as it's called, even though it's a Shadow Ball sort of situation. This poor Clockwork, he can't get close to anything. He's getting bullied out by this Earth Shaker. But the problem they're going to have to be facing is Space Man Spurf. He's got free farm. They're not really doing anything to control this Viper, and that's always a dangerous plan. So Quantum, he's, all he's, he's getting his level 2 off of this next kill creep, as long as he stays within range. Oh, he might be getting the Courier. It's coming in, but he doesn't have anything leveled up. He can't Janata it, so it's just... Courier's just going to walk away from this one. Unless... So much oh, for the Radiance no, he had enough. Just Holy offs it in one hit. Uh, no cargo worth. They already delivered the the gloves, and that's that's your fir first blood on a courier. <laughs> oh no, damn! All right, so with that, the bounty hunters gonna rotate out a little bit. Bounty They're gonna go on this clockwork. He seems to be almost DC. Okay, he sees him. He's running, but it's too late. There's nowhere to run, nowhere to hide, and Swift, Jack Swift getting the first kill on the Necrophos. Never. Never good for the opposite team because that is a snowball-y terrifying hero who's already got a headdress. He's not needing any free farm at this point. Alright. Maggot. Getting in some decent damage on uh, Kev Dog, but gonna blink up. Grab this haste root. No? Yep. No? Yep. Just drinking a bottle. Dyer's mid tower so, could use a little help. Get his bottle charges, and then here's Ambrochan ready to go in on this Storm Spirit if he overreaches it all. But Kip Dog gonna look to go into this jungle, but it's been warded off. There's nothing there for him, so he has to come back to lane. I think he knows he saw the Earthshaker come through uh, from this ward over here. So he knows that they're they're planning something, but so he's gonna stay decently back. Try the patience of the Earthshaker, but if he's not careful okay. This ward is gonna be doing work if he's in, there he is, he's a little far forward. Goes for it, Maggot not ready though. Don't don't blink in or scream or anything. Teleport coming in though, coming from the uh, the Enchantress, she drops him a free bottle drink, and uh, he's good to go. This clockwork is having such a horrible time up here. The heartbreaking aura, he's just regening to keep up, and all the right clicks and everything, it's not going to be a good lane for him. But, you know, you have your, your Dazzle in the bottom lane, and your Space Marine Spurf already level 4. Let's check our last hits, see how everybody's doing there. Yeah, look at this, 20 last hits already for Space Marine Spurf, and 6 denies even against an empty lane. Also... Jesus was my dad looking to rotate top. Maybe help this poor clockwork out. As he's already back in the yes. Getting all the little stuns off that he needs. He's going to try to get this kill on Ambrochen, but he, does he have enough? He's got the flare if he needs it. And he does it! Solo kill on the Shaker! That is exactly what he needed. Cold feet throwing it down, but the Cog's going to be pushing Lobby all the way back. And that is a free kill going the way of your clockwork, who was having a terrible time up to now, but now he's got 865 gold. But, wrap around on mid. Oh, it's going to be a one-for-one one trade warning. as Quanta coming in. Oh, but he doesn't even get the chance. Queen of Pains, Dot, takes out the Storm Spirit. So, one-for-one one trade in the mid lane. No winners there. Herbs, Jack Swift, get Herbs out, getting him inside the cogs. But is it going to be enough damage? He needs to be really careful here. Jack Swift, the heal pulse coming out. Is it going to be enough to get the kill? Oh, he's got 24 health left after he gets out of there. Woo! But meanwhile, Enchantress being taken down a little farther up. She just stuck her little nose out a little too far and got it chopped off, poor thing. All right, Dazzle rotating mid to help uh, this Kev Dog of uh, Storm Spirit get rolling. But he's almost got his level 6, so Gankatronic's about to come online. Same thing with Queen of Pain. She's not doing quite as well. She's about 8 last hits behind, but she should be able to make that up rather quickly. And then Broach Shannon Quantum Radiant's both rolling in with the, uh, the Chilling Touch procs. <laughs> Kev Dog knows something's up because he ran into them. Zips him. Radiant's it's going really hard to get this kill, but that's a hard hit and blown up by the Queen of Pain who blinks in at the last second. Almost lost the Shaker on that, but he stood his ground so that way she could blink in and get the kill. Very nicely played from the supports on the side of Shadow Forge Gaming. Dazzle, meanwhile, he's Radiant's up to level 3. Not doing too bad. Spurs and Spurf hitting level 6. This tower's almost gone top, though. Tries to get the zoning clocks, accidentally pulls in the Necrophos with him and needs to get out of here. He's got no regen other than his, his happy little wand. And this Necrophos is already up to 1600 gold. That's insanely quick farm. Check our, our net worth. Yeah, he's definitely topping that out by over 400 gold, even over the free farming 
Viper in the bottom lane. Quap going again Start onto the Storm Spirit. But he has the zip around now, so he has extra powered shots if he wants to use it. And she just decides to blink away. He drops the remnant and he'll get out of here safely. Meanwhile, they look to trade the this tower, but it doesn't look like it's going to be able to happen. There's just too many creeps here. Creep waves incorrect for this. If you throw the stun, Bershka Dershka going on, getting gone on by Quantum. There's a ton of damage. He shallow graves himself. See if he looks to port. No, he's looking to turn around. He's sick of this guy. There's going to be enough poison on him to blow him up. And that's a turn around just from a shallow grave, but it's down for a minute. So let's see if they can capitalize on that. Jesus, was my dad diving in so hard? He's like, I got a double damage room, and I got a heal. No need to worry, but he does need to worry. One more tower shot, and he could be in some serious trouble. Oh, my God, that was so close. He turned around trying to get this mid tower. Meanwhile, some blows being traded mid, but nothing too serious. And they're not going to be able to take this. Necrophos harassing out Herb Salad. And Kevdog having to deal with this Shadow Strike spam, and it's not led to kind of a bad time in that mid lane. Spruce Man Spurf getting pinged out by the Bounty Hunter. See if they, they decide if they're feeling gutsy now that his ult is on cooldown and there's no Dyer's shallow grave to save him. Stun coming out on Mer Bershka Dershka. This Ambro Chen, he has a lot more damage than this poor little Dazzle who's only level 4. They're both level 4, but here comes the Bounty Hunter to come Shadow and try wave. to finish him off. Shadow Wave coming out and there's the stun, but here comes the Viper. Decides not to dive too hard for it though. He needs to play it safe. He's the carry. He needs to make sure that he can continue to do so. Kev Dog and Maggot trading just some casual farm. As Jack Swift is looking to pick up his buckler. Radiant's He's getting very close to this mechanism, shape. which is a huge team fight item. His poor top lane has just been so harassed and moved around that they're even losing their tier 2 tower right now. Even before the side of Radiant's Hardcore Pwn can get one. Taking hits. Maggot going top to grab the rune. It's going to be a bounty. Never a bad rune. Always a little bit of fun. Kev Dog has been committed to staying in this lane and getting his farm. Which is good because he's he's fallen about 500 gold behind this quap in this mid lane. So, Kip Dog on Hardcore Pwn gonna be running down, and if he can get here in time, the Rune of Destiny awaits. It's the regen, but Maggot's gonna blink ahead of him and just grab it before he can do anything. Got the Bounty Hunter here, does as well. Throws in that thing. <laughs> the Janata gets the. Sure, can. This is going to be easy kill. Oh no, the Scream gets the Enchantress who's coming in on the back end. But here comes the hook in from the, the Clockwork. He might have bit off a little more than he can chew with the Invisible Bounty Hunter. But the Queen of Pain blinks out and she throws the Shadow Strike. It's going to be another kill. Oh no, here we go. The Shallow Grave keeping him alive for one second longer. He doesn't decide to fight. He tries to get out. He's looking for any sort of TP, anything to get out. Drops the cogs to keep himself safe. And they're going to end up getting the Bounty Hunter. And the Clockwork dies to Shadow Strike. Spurs Man Spurf coming in and cleaning up on the Ancient Apparition, though, so it's not a total loss. A two for three trade in the end. Whew. A lot of action there for a second. All right, Kev Dog already back up and on his feet. Spurs Man Spurf, he's almost completed his mech as well, so we got two of the main farmers getting mechs early, really quickly here. Necrophos Radiant already done with his. A pretty sight right now. And he's got mana boots as well. But Treads... Complete for Spruce Moon Spurf. Because they look to take the mid tower. Maggot deciding his ult is almost is on cooldown. He doesn't want to dive into this too hard. And he's just going to let him get some free tower hits. But meanwhile, they're going to look to trade bottom as Lobby moving in. But Bounty Hunters, he's on. He's hunting for that bounty. Looking for that poor Enchantress who's been kind of dealt with. He drops a ward to block some camps and decides he's going to get out of, out of here. Jesus was my dad. I'll build a headdress. Probably go for a helm. All the rotations coming in. They know a bounty hunter's in here somewhere, and they're determined to kill him. But seeing nothing, they're they're gonna go. They're gonna head back. Quantum picking up the double damage rune on the bounty hunter. That's ultra dangerous, because that invisible chop coming out of nowhere. It's almost as dangerous as that eye patch. Look at it. Look at it. Trouble right. brewing at Radiant's bottom tower. Bottom tower being right clicked down right now by this Dyer's AA, and everybody's gonna down. be here to support him. If not, Radiant's bottom not completely inside, but days. <laughs> that front line tank refos is going to be standing there and set to come in. Lobby need no to be careful. Okay, through so. the dire structures for Gets now. the, uh, Trouble the aggro off of him as we have a port tower. coming in from the Viper. Dyer's he might not want to do this. There's more here than he thought. He's going in and gets stunned. Here comes the Storm Spirit trying to zip in and get that Earth Shaker. But decides to turn around and he decides this nice juicy Necrophos is a much better target. He's taking the tower. He blows his mech, but it's not going to be enough to save him. But it's enough to get the kill on Spurf. Man, Spurf. Not enough in Mutant Kevdog. Zipping around and he knows somebody else is in here. 
Lobby just gonna be stuck in, and he throws the ult though. Three down. Not gonna be enough at the level one to kill anybody, I don't think. But there's this bounty hunter. Doesn't get the chop soon enough. Goes to the shuriken first. Kind of messed up his timing there. If you could have get the gotten the chop as well, he might have had enough damage to take down the clockwork. But Dazzle gonna be chasing him out of here. He's like, ah, I'm sick of your crap. And this one lone ranged creep deciding he's tired of bounty hunter as well. And he was like, come on, man, stop following me. Okay. Mid lane. Not a lot happening. Started Radiant's on the Orchid, got the Oblivion, first Oblivion Staff ready as the mid tower has been taken. So they trade their mid for a bottom. Not a bad trade, is considering the kills that came along with it. Jack Swift, one of the big targets out there, getting knocked out of his number one position as far as farm. Spurs Spurf, Spurf, throwing the Ice Blast, says, Where's Jesus, where's my dad? Here comes the Janata. He's super slow, can't get it off. Shallow Grave, it's gonna be enough to keep her alive through the shatter of the AA ult. They've got vision, they've got zipping, and that is a dead bounty hunter. Quap looking to, was over here planning on, on wrapping around, but just too much happened too fast, and that poor bounty hunter got blown up. So now the kill score going actually the way of Hardcore Pwn rather than Shadowforge Gaming, but Shadowforge Gaming have a, a tower. Zipping on the AA, he's in the cogs, he's the stuns, he throws his ultimate, he tries to get the cold feet, he's doing significant damage, Urpsal needs to be careful here, he might shatter. Let's see, oh no, nope, it's just the level one ult, so no shattering today. A lot of damage though. Alright, so Jesus was my death. Going in on the Necrophos, who just one shot and blows her up. He's dead for 50 seconds. Luckily, not an egg, so no extra time. Dazzle throwing the, uh, the broken armor onto the um, bounty hunter, but he's just gonna walk out of it. He's like, screw that. I don't need none of this. We got the whole side of Hardcore Pwn. They're, they're kind of gathering up right now. They're, they're deciding they want to... Uh, who's got the shirt? Oh, that's the Enchantresses. All right, so Radiance yeah, they gathered up. They decided they, they're tired of getting picked off, and they don't want to deal with anybody alone. But Spurs Man Spurf going alone. He's going to that mid lane, going to try to see if he can get some free kills in his name. Throwing some free auto attacks onto Jack Swift. And uh, let's see if they try to get in there to deal with them. Here comes the AA ult. It looks like it's going to be right on target. Radiant Space Spurf now in trouble because he can't heal and he's taking damage. And so he's going to be delayed enough that they might be able to take this tower. Radiant's mid tower. Yeah, here, looks like it's going to be enough. He can't go in there and fight. It's just enough time to get Radiant's that tower. That's all the tier one tier towers structures. down for the Radiant side. Space Man Spurf coming in looking for anybody, but he's just too late. He got zoned out hard by the AA ult. Skill shot hashtag. All right, Quantum picking up the bounty rune on the bounty hunter. Let's see, he's built his um. Uh, well, he's got the orb of venom to keep everybody Haste. slowed up and exactly where he wants them. But not a whole lot of pushing coming out. Bershka Dershka not able to buy much on this poor, poor dazzle. He's a low bottom of the net worth. The Earthshaker in the meantime, he's he's been able to pick up his arcane boots and magic wand. He's not doing too bad at all for support. He's just been involved in so many kills. Some of which were his own, but still. Track coming out, level 6 bounty hunter. So he tracks up Spreesmer and Spurf because they want to be able to keep a track of him and they really want this kill. Here comes the AA ult. Is it going to be enough to clip him? It does clip him and that's going to be the dead Spurf. And he gets Necrophos ulted as well. And they throw another track out onto Jesus was my dad. He takes a hell of a lot of damage, but here comes the zip in, but the screen! Oh, but he zips away from it. Almost hook shot on the back end. He traps him inside the cogs. And it looks like they are stuck there. A two for one trade, including the main big carry of the Necrophos going the way of Hardcore Pwn. Looked really bad for them, but in the end, they pick up a few uh, badly needed kill. The only, the only problem right now is this Queen of Pain didn't die, and she's dangerously close to her uh, her orchid, which is gonna spell huge problems for good old zip around storm, so. They decide they're gonna take advantage of this these deaths and try to push the top tower as much as they can. Kev Dog is getting closer to his heart. He's, he's about two thirds of the way there. I guess half the way there. Okay, uh, pause coming out from Ancient Appar Apparition. Paso, sick, Necros having some issues. So, we'll see. Uh, it doesn't look like he's having issues. He's got plenty of money. He's topping out that net worth chart, and we'll see if he continues to do so. All right. 
let's take a look and see uh, what everybody's building. So we got Herb Salad. He's been able to pick up his face boots. He's been buying dust, but he needs to get that blade mail online pretty soon here to kind of control the where and when Queen of Pain can use her ultimate. Spurs Man Spurf, he's got his mech, he's got his boots, he's doing fairly well for himself, but not as well as this uh, Storm Spare dude, like I said, working on his, uh, his Bloodstone. Bounty Hunter being that hard support, he's the lowest on his team, but he's still doing very well. Hand of Midas picked up by the Ancient Apparition to just try to power farm that Aghanim Scepter. And Earthshaker, still sitting with the boots and wand, so everybody's having a pretty decent game, not, not too terrible timings on anything. Meanwhile, the Enchantress still just sitting on a, on a headdress and a, a ring of Basilius. Only 606 health, which is kind of insane considering this uh, Queen of Pain ult does, uh, let's see, what is it, 290? That's almost, that's insane amount of damage. But, we'll see if they all, they, looks like they might even have enough time to take this tier 1 tower with uh, Necrophos all the way back at base but he's got the tp scroll ready but uh let's see anybody else okay queen of pains tp is ready and i think the earthshaker had one no yeah so her and queen of pain gonna be the only ones rocking a tp scroll right now let's see uh I, jesus was my dad asking an eta for the necrophos as uh i understand he, he uh is having a few problems but that's okay he'll be back here soon one of the weirdest faces for clockwork i just can't it's just, he reminds me of, of Dr. Robotnik. It's kind of nuts. Of course, never as ugly as Viper is. That's just one hideous beast there. Bounty Hunter's got that sweet, sweet eye patch. And, and Earthshaker rocking the, the horns. So while we're paused here, let's uh, don't forget to check out the subreddit and you know sign up for more of the game of game is hard check out the schedule see if there's uh anybody on there that sounds particularly interesting or if you're interested in signing up for yourself you know never hurts to try all right oh well at least the wards have been pretty interesting this game a lot of contention over the radiant jungle as you can see because they really want to keep it so that they have to keep the enchantress outside of her comfort zone outside of that jungle outside of just you know, AFKing and then coming out with an insane amount of damage. So they warded up her entire jungle and then gotten dewarded because they <laughs> they want to get her online. She's not having the best of time and she can ha she has such potential, but I guess she's doing better than the the shaker and everything. It's it's funny you never you, you always see differences between the the support and the carry mana or <laughs> net worth. But this is pretty big even for that. Let's see which team is in the lead. Okay, so it's it's Shadow. Forge Gaming, no surprise there, but not by a whole ton right now. Now, what they're really leading, is, Hardcore Pwn is actually staying up on the uh, the experience, just like they did in that first game. So they, uh, <clears throat> okay, sorry, read in chat, never do that. So they, you know, they might be losing in gold, but they're they're leading in experience, and that means they're they're not falling as far behind as as it sometimes may feel, which is always important. Hellbear Smasher picked up for his Thunderclap, never bad. Swiftness Aura. You know, makes you swift. Alrighty then. Pause, pa, 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 pause. Oh, here's the G coming out from Quantum on Shadow Forge Gaming, and we'll see how it goes in this top lane. Thank you. Alright, so yeah, the they're doing some decent right click damage. The Using the Hellbear to kind of scout around a little. Here comes the AA ult, but it's only going to connect on the Dazzle. He might have to grave himself if he's not careful. Here comes the Necro Close. And no yeah, okay. So just a real quick pick off on the Necrophos who teleported in and was just instantly screwed. First Kadershka you know going back home on his Dazzle Amberchen. Coming to try to bully out again with his, uh, his Earthshaker, but you can't bully a Viper. We're just getting some free right clicks in as he heads back out. They ping out there like, hey, I got tracked. Because you can always see the debuff if you didn't know. So it looks like... Uh, Hardcore Pwn going to be able to walk away from this one pretty easily. Free tower, free kill. That's what you want all day long. But they got to be careful. Maggot's keeping up uh, his farm very, very well. As, uh, a lot of slow rotations coming down there. They're just kind of deciding exactly where they want to go. Glowing Eyed, the anus beast. <laughs> Apparently. <laughs> Fantastic. Let's see what was the anus beast and schnitzel. 
<laughs> Good careers. All right. So, Kev Dog moving into the woods, trying to get some more uh, farm, finish up his bloodstone, but uh, he's got his soul booster already. Not bad timing, considering the, the start wasn't the most glorious. Grabs the favorite rune of any storm spirit, the regen rune. He's got to be careful here, though, because that quantum can just toss one... Oh, AA pausing it up again. Mouse is dead. Uh-oh. That's always an issue. That's what uh, happens when you uh, have a wireless mouse or anything like that. You got to be careful. <laughs> Life is hard. Okay, here it goes. Coming back. Got the new mouse. Got it all plugged in. Remember, kids, always carry a spare mouse. Is that a mouse in your pocket? Why, well, yes. Yes, it is. First condition. Okay, there's all the right, G. Here comes Jack Swift. He's going to be just farming up. Now, um, Queen of Pain moving into the jungle. She really wants to finish this Orchid of Malevolence. That way she can get that kill on the Storm Spirit. Easy as you ever saw. But she's getting closer. So, we'll see how that works out for her. Uh, meanwhile, Jesus was my dad's. Picked up some a few creeps. He's... Picked up a creep that can make other creeps, never a bad thing. And everybody's just kind of milling about smartly, waiting to see if they want to go into the Roche Pit, I'm guessing. Alright, kind of indecisive. Okay, there's the smoke. And here we go, Kev Dog leaving the Kev Dog leading the way. Alright, he's going into the Roche Pit, seeing and he's just gonna start right clicking this bad boy down. Spaceman Spurf there. Gets it off. He's like, ah, I'm a Viper. I can tank this. So, plus, you know, the more Roche hits him, the more he hurts himself. Ooh, Jesus, my dad might need to be careful to stay a little farther back. Why well, not? One little bash did a whole ton of damage, but they might be being scouted out here by the Earthshakers. He gets ready to move in. The AA ult hitting on everybody. No blink dagger, though, on the uh, Earthshakers. You can't blink in and echo slam everybody to death. Hook shot by Herb Salad, but he catches the invisible bounty hunter, throws out the dust, and gets everyone. But they need to be careful here. Kevdog said he's going to pull, pull the zoning game as they pulled up everyone back almost to full health. Jesus, my dad, need to get really low. And there's the screen taking out almost everybody except for the chain on the shallow graved Viper. There comes the Shadow Wave to try to save him, but it's not going to happen. Zip in from uh, Kevdog. He's trying to get out of here now that he's gotten the pickoff, but it's going to be a 4 for 2 four. trade. And Roche. They defeated it. They killed almost all of Roche, too. As the last three from Shadow Forge Gaming move into the pit. Tough fight for Hardcore Pwn. With that, I think they lose the. Uh, yeah, there's the net worth going hardcore in the Shadow Forge. So they pick it up the Aegis, throw it on the Necrophos so he can just Tankrophos and be, do his thing. Do something about that and bottom he'll tower. be going bottom. Trying to save this tower gonna be very easy they've kept their towers relatively healthy and their lanes relatively pushed out so that is just not the fight you want to see if you're hardcore pwn but space man spur farty is like screw it i'm back on the ground let's do this you gotta love that all right so necrophos good looking to push out this bottom tower get, get some farm apply some pressure never a bad thing i mean let's face it on the kev dog's doing the same thing on the opposite side of the map Blowing bitches up. All right. Things coming out. Everybody's like, okay, gather here. There's the AA ult. Not gonna connect on anybody, though. So let's see if they got a smoke here. They got dust, but no smoke. I guess they decide it's time to five, man. They need to fight as one. Incoming. If they hadn't gotten all AA... Man, the AOE damage from um, Shadow Forge has just been insane. The, the scream and the AA ult and the freaking shaker. It's just, it's a lot to deal with. But we'll see uh, okay. yeah, if our poor pwn comes back from this. The bottom getting pushed out there. They've gone heavily into the wood, the uh, jungle this time. They're not really looking to, to stick their necks out any farther than they have to. Bloodstone finished up for the Necrophos. That means a lot of mana. That means a pocket suicide too, so no pickoffs on him. We're getting lobby. He's hand of Midas. He's, he's managed to build a stick. He's really far away from that badly needed Aghanim scepter, though. That's where AA really comes online, I believe. You know, bounty room for the bounty hunter again. He's gonna find that bottle it and have some sweet, delicious gold. Orchid Malevolence finished up on the Queen of Pain, and it looks like she's gonna go straight into Ags after this. Nice damage item, and like I said, that storm needs to be careful now. And be careful where you, where you zip. Any Blink Dagger coming out? Well, not yet. But they're splitting up the warding duties. There's wards all over this map. 
Dazzle. This poor, poor Dazzle. Still at the bottom. He's not even worth two grand yet. I mean, when somebody's worth uh, almost four times, over four times your worth yeah, on the other team, that's Dazzle. heavy. Good. He's getting some, finally some some farm here in the middle lane, but he's giving it over to this Enchantress who's starting to come online. She's picked up her Vlad's. Now it looks like she's going to go p uh, finish off her boots. Get them treads rolling. I guess stepping, because they don't roll. They're not wheels. All right, so a lot of, a lot of... Okay, here's the smoke coming around from Shadow Forge Gaming. I keep wanting to say Fiend. So they look like they're just going to dive right past. But they get exposed by the zipping away Storm Spirit. And everybody's going to have time to get away. Spurf, smart, Spurf. Getting tracked out, but he looks to get out. She just look like that. Everything dropped on him. Two ultimates. So that is, might mean that Space Man Swift can get away uh, without any trouble. Ice Vortex slowing him down. But here comes the Dazzle to throw in that extra armor and take the armor away from his, his foes. Oh, God, the bouncing Janata. Or bouncing. In a row. Shuriken getting so much damage on both of them. That's two track kills. That's an insane amount of money. That's that's not good for Shadow Oh, no, both wards going to be taken out for absolutely free as they look to turn and take this jungle and then probably push out this bottom tower. Man. Hardcore game coming out from Shadow Forge Gaming. They're here to play. They'll clear out the creep wave and get ready to roll again. The only one to get away with the Bloodstone complete is Storm Spirit. Let's see how much, just how much gold, oh wow, that's, that's way more gold than I ever think it's going to be. Um, track kills leading the way, all right. Quantum sitting behind the tower getting seen and nobody coming up. It's like, all right guys, it's safe to keep pushing. Goes back out of sight and visits up. Gets pretty close to the tower. He might have been in sight there. There's the, the long range AA ultimates. Oh no, it hits Spaceman's Perf. The only one you don't want it to hit. Oh, Durska Durska just taking so much damage. You can support too hard if you don't uh, get enough to get, get, right now. get your levels in. Alright, here we go. Rocket coming in, trying to scare him off, but. They'll, they'll, they'll back off for now, but Heal Pulse coming out from the Necrophos, and he hasn't even blown his mech yet, so this push will continue. Let's back up this camera, see where everybody's at. The AA, of course, playing all the way to the back line, so he almost has his ult up again. He's really doing a nice job of landing that on top of the Viper to keep him out of the fight. Um, it's Quantum being sneaky on the back lines, trying to get vision of anybody. Herb Salad decides he doesn't want to be seen either, so he just sits back, shoots a rocket. Just going for the creep wave. So, really nothing coming out from this. Oh, they almost get it. I think the Storm Spirit got in the way of the clockwork. Who's going to... Oh, Burst of Burst of Blowing up on the other side. I'm zipping around. Looking for the AA, but there's all the heals in the world. Echo Slam even committed to kills off this non-pocket side. Non-pocket suicide Storm Spirit. Hey, trying to run away from this heal pulse. catch him. Jesus, was my dad. Jesus taking damage. And he's just going to be rolling. Right. There's the flare coming that? out. Oh, Spurs Man Spurf really needs to get out of here. He's kind of the team. Cogs perfectly done. Zoning out everybody on the other team. I think I've never seen five Cogs come all go off. That was really well on his part. Of course, back up is Kevdog because he's got that Bloodstone keeping him rolling. Here comes the AA ult. Viper is like, see you, buddy. i got to get out of here. Oh, no. It catches on Kevdog. Uh, probably not going to be enough to, to kill him, but he can't heal Dyer's up. He can't do anything. Towers, you know the drill. And there's this bottom tower getting taking damage. But meanwhile, top taking some right clicks from this lone centaur courser. He's like, ah, his life for tower. And there he goes. So out of everything, they still managed to keep their tower alive, but uh, pay a heavy price with those all those track kills going going off and getting an insane amount of gold for the opposite team. Let's take a look. Yeah, look at that net worth graph. It's insane. It was just here. No, it's all the way down there. Same with experience. 75,000 on both aspects, but they get some free D words for Burska Durska. And they've now look at they're, they're afraid to go out by themselves. They're all kind of grouped up here. They're they don't want to get picked off, but they don't want to be team fought either, so Knowing this, you see Shadow Forge Gaming, though they have all the time in the world, so they're like, okay, we're just gonna freaking farm up whatever. Alright. Quap blinking home, probably looking to pick up something. She's got. Oh, it's her Ag Scepter. That's brutal. 
And of course with the Ag Scepter, let's see what the upgrades are. Scepter damage, 450 damage. That's almost enough to kill poor little Enchantress. That's half, over half her life. Herb Salad. Looks like he's going to go for a BKB. Not a bad plan with all the magic damage coming out from Shadow Forge Gaming. They might need a lot more BKBs. I wouldn't be surprised to see Space Worm Spurf. Uh, no, he's, he's dedicated. He's too far into his Agony Scepter to change, but he, that... A BKB is probably the way to go to prevent the, the damage from almost everybody. You, you don't have to worry about the AA ult. You don't have to worry about the Queen of Pain ult. You don't have to worry about Necrophos, any anything except for right click. It's a genuinely awesome plan. Oh, look, it's using the illusions to block the camps from spawning. That's pretty brilliant. I like that. That's a solid strat. Solid strat. All right. Tracked up Spurs Man Spurf, who's worth Six in uh, a row. Big, Oh, that tells that? you how much they're carrying. Oh, no zipping away for the... Long enough. The poor... <laughs> storm Spirit. As we get a hook in from Herb Salad, they might end up getting this kill, but he gets the cogs off, which is a little too late. And now he's trapped inside of them, and Spurs Man Spirit going to be going down. Luckily, he's not trapped anymore, but still... Going down on his leathering wings. Back up on Herb Salad, so he can't hide from anybody, and they're just going to trap him down row. as well. How about that? Poor Clockwork never stood a chance. Taste your own. It's a fool for nothing trade with track kills. This Necrophos is terrifying. He's already got 13,000 net worth as they move to try to take this tower as well. It has no health at all. I wouldn't be surprised if it gives top us easily. Bad no fortification because they need it for this the next got one two or three tower. tower. But Kevdog's like, hey, I'm here and you need to deal with that. So he's just going to be throwing out some right clicks. He, sees, he knows four of them are there because they just took down the tower and my dad's going to be in. Dazzle throwing out uh, a weave, but they'll just get out of here. Ping on Ambroch, and he's picked up his Blink Dagger, which is going to make a huge difference when it comes to his positioning. That probably explains the amazing Fissure coming out against that Clockwork. He just got in there, Blink, bam, done. You're out of it. Well, they're pinging out the Roche Pit, so they decided to uh, head that way got a oh, oh, flare okay giving them the vision on the, uh, the radiant side but they're just sending in a good old scouting AA he's just there eh, I'm here just, hey guys Rosie Rose, Rose. Uh, I think radiant should let him have this there unless they don't have quite the AOE team fight the only thing that they can do is maybe get Kev dog over there to try to get that Aegis snatch sounds dirtier than it is trust me all right Zip. Jack Swift also gonna be Heading up towards this Roche pit. Everybody's gathered around it, but for now, they're just going to be stacking up and trying to kill this ancient camp. And I could take a lot of damage, actually, from trying to take this camp. As it starts with Jack Swift, he's just sitting, getting stunned. Let's see what the response to this is. Are any scouting flare coming out? Clockwork has it, but he's it's on cooldown. Luckily, he can't take it too quick by himself. So here comes Maggot. He's kind of throwing some of her throwing dagger right clicks. And we'll see. Oh, man. Jack Swift taking a lot of damage. The problem was they don't really have anybody super tanky in order to, to take this uh, away. But they got the Shadow Strike. They've got so much damage. It, it might it might be fine. Necrophos can do this easy. Regen Rune battled by, by the Bounty Hunter in the meantime. But... They see it, and they know they see it. So here comes the AA ult. There comes the. Oh man! They throw the Necrophos ult a little early on. Jesus is my dad. There's the shallow grave, the weave coming out from the dazzle. And looks like they're gonna just walk away from this. They lose an enchantress, but oh, the blink scream. Gonna be enough to kill off the clockwork as well. And the poor enchantress creeps even. Taking the ward, they're taking everything. As three creep and a ward trade for nothing. As they move back to the mid lane, they're like, they're dead, they're pushing. You gotta love Shadow Forge Gaming's uh, mentality that, you know, something happens, let's do something, take something. Kev Dog was so ready to zip in there, but now he has to zip home and protect. Already under half damage. The tracked up Spaceman Spurf not being able to do much. He's being very controlled. He's one item away from his Agnums, though, and they're just not gonna die. Oh, the blink echo! Spurs, not Spurf, no! All of your, all of your health, all of it's gone. Poor 
Storm Spirit didn't even stand a chance either. He was immediately dispatched with. Dispatched of. Dispatched. And uh, this thing might look for a high ground siege. They, they've been weaved, but, you know, they still have their mechanism ready from Necrophos, and he's like, yeah, let's do it. Vortex, both feet. He melts Preak Braves pretty efficiently. Blow, there's the flare. And this tier 3, they might want to consider supporting it. No buybacks available for their main cores. Radiance you know, they, they throw the weave and, and make them take a little more damage from the tower, but it's not really going to be that good for much. The pulse. Throw some poison coming out from the dazzle, but... The zip in! Long range! But the zip back. <laughs> the zoning zip, as it's known. But they do a significant amount of damage to the town. They're like, oh yeah, Rush, we were doing that. Let's go, let's go finish that guy off. Rush is like, oh, I'm just chilling here with my spears in my side. You can, you know, not. But they're waiting for the flare to go down, it looks like. Or maybe they're just epic game sense. That was crazy. So they look to, uh, no, they're not looking to take Rush. Maybe they want to trick them into thinking they're taking Rush and then get another turnaround. <laughs> Helm of the Dominator creep. Or no, Enchantress to creep. And they come here, check it out. It gets blown up. Ult. Um, there's the Shallow Grave. Bershka Dershka being kept safe for now. Muted getting silenced. Bershka Dershka getting overcompetent. Turns around, but this is going to be... Oh, Scepter Ult. He's down for 71 seconds. Ouch. That... <laughs> is for freaking ever so with that they might want to consider turning around and going into the pit they don't have to worry about the weave they don't have to worry about the shallow grave they don't have to worry about the poison so jack swift gets it started Ooh, four staff coming out on the earth shaker right now shadow forge you know they, that mid game really brought them to the forefront they're killing it now Rio T is picked up by Jack Swift so he can split push all he wants quantum being not for that mech charge i think he would have died to that ult Gem of True Side picked up by him. Uh, AM Scepter, and uh, looks like she's building a Scotty as well. Sending in the Centaur to try to just mess people up. Goes for the stop gets yeah, and the rocket. Too bad. Quantum getting really low though. Maggot as well. Said they're going to take a second to destroy that Centaur. Now, yeah, have to blink out on the Queen of Pain as she goes, bottles up. Spurs Ram Swift coming in. A lot of right da quick damage. Oh my god, two blown up almost instantly by the zip in from. Uh, Kevdog, but they're gonna have to back up here. Spurs Run Spurf is not ready to fight. Here comes the ult, the blink in, the right click, the track. It's be enough to kill. And another. Uh, to ult 74 seconds. Down. Kevdog's ready. He's like, hey, everybody else is dead. I got four Bloodstone charges. I'm just gonna get some, uh, some sight. Oh no. She blinks in and finishes him off. 442 gold. Necrophos getting the kill from the, the Death Pulse, actually, because once he had vision, he just popped it, and then that bloodstain is what happens to the Storm Spirit. Jack Swift getting ready to uh, BOTs his way around as the lanes are fairly pushed in. And boarded. They, 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 they want to see everything that's happening. No tier 2 towers remain on the side of Hardcore Pwn. Whew, a lot of action there for a little while. We'll take a look. See what everybody's working on. There's the Ag Scepter, the dreaded Ag Scepter coming out for Ancient Apparition. That's going to be something to deal with if you're Hardcore Pwn. He's even got his level 2 ultimate up. He's only three levels away from that level 3. Spurs Man Spurf trying to get some recovery farm. He's all, he's very, very close to that Aghanim Scepter. So a few more decent right clicks. Oh, we'll get him there. Quantum pushing out the bottom lane. He's also picked up his BOTs. He's a BO team. So, him and the Necrophos apparently going to be running around, keeping everything pushed in. They know they don't have the greatest wave clear, but they can keep everything going. So, well, as far as the bounty hunter, anyway, he just wants to be there for kills. Let's face it. He's like, <laughs> Is there a fight? I shall be there with the track gold. All right, so both teams kind of. Incoming! Backing off for a second, taking a second. The Aghanim Scepter, though, on top of the their Space Man's Burst done, and an Aghanim Scepter for the Clockwork. You know, the Clockwork, I think he might have had a better time going for the Blade Mail, but now that he has it, he can hook all the time. I think it's like an eight second cooldown now, once he, now that he has that. So it looks like we might have a Ghost Scepter coming out for Necrophos, so he can just stand and be annoying as crap. <laughs> not have to worry about anything. Ah, 
Sorry. Sheep. That's a sheep. Mystic staff. Sheep. All right. So he BOTs to the mid lane and uh, looks like they're going to get ready to push. Oh. I hold my tongue. Look at that. I forgot about this bottom tier 2 tower. It's just hanging out. So and I wonder if they're going to want to push this. He moves up. Here comes the free, uh, <laughs> the free kill on the cramps. The free gold, but... They're gathering up. They want to take this tower. Destroy the ward and get ready to roll. But the ward has already given away that they're there. They're all there. So let's see if that scares anybody off or keeps Radiant's them rolling. bottom tower seem better days. <laughs> Cheeky blink just to punch the tower once. But there's no way they're going to defend this. But on the back lines. Radiant's bottom oh, tower ain't a off. pretty sight right now. And there's that last one. Radiant last lost one of them bottom towers. Flare coming out, Scream coming out, and we'll see if they go to move further. Man, it's been a while since I've seen it. This tanky of a necrophos. He's just kind of standing in front of everything. That was Spaceman's first job. Okay, here comes that Ags upgraded. Oof. So much damage for Aragorn. I just will still you can fight, Dazzle. You can't heal from the fountain. And you can be broken. It's gonna be enough to kill him. Where are you going? Getting close. Okay, now he'll be fine. Track up on the Enchantress. Ultimate thrown out against Jack Swift, but not a lot that this Viper can do by himself. Oh no, no, no! Oh, the Shallow Grave saving Spaceman Spurf from that ultimate at the very last second. He will go down, but he won't be down with the added extra eggs time as the Octarine Core picked up by Jack Swift. That's what Echo Slam doing huge damage to the Dazzle and the Tracked up Blockwork. And this might be GG. That was everybody except for the Enchantress who was trying to run around to get back anywhere. Gets tracked up, gets beat up, gets. Guess that's right ten in a row. Three down. We have Bane picking up a kill on that. So, luckily, they don't have any creeps to work with, so that might keep this tower uh, alive a little bit longer. Radiant's but bottom tower seems like, days. I got this. No back. Your door defense is gonna help you now. Alright. <laughs> <laughs> I think Necrophos just used his bloodstone to deny himself so he could come. He did! He denied himself, had the Aegis, and came back with full health and mana. You gotta love something that cheeky as hell. You get a com he decides when he dies. They're gonna take his melee backs and everything. Oh no, they just came back to life. First Kadoshka and Spaceman Spurf, both getting hit by that Aghanim Scepter AA ult as they rotate mid, take the tower, and this might. This is two lanes here. I don't think there's anything they can do. There's the flare. Jack Swift going for the uh, control. They, they try to dust for it and get the easy kill on the didn't make it. bounty hunter, but nothing being done. Oh no, the sickle coming out for Jack Swift, godlike. And that's dead dazzle for 75 seconds. They try to dust, trying to see if anybody needs to pick off. They want to get quantum, they want to get anything, but there's going to be another trap killer. Tower, tower, and that happens on that. Oh, clockwork. It's first non Spurf getting caught out, but he's going to have enough to get in. Zip in as they go to try to kill Lobby. They're sick of his ultimates, but poor Kevdog is just going to be silenced and trying to run away. Slow, destroyed, 41 to 18, but no one's thrown in the tower. Oh, there's the towel. It's been thrown by Bershka Dershka. And that is a good game, well played by both sides, but it looks like Shadow Forge Gaming gonna be finishing it off with the Quapple. done it again. Great game, fun to watch, and I hope you guys had fun too. Let's see, MVP of that game probably gonna be the Necrophos. You know, he just came out of nowhere and decided to kill everybody. Then congratulations to Shadow Forge Gaming as they pick up their second win in the Dota Game is Hard Dota League. Wow, look at this, look at this, 19 kills. MVP, MVP all day. All right, guys, I'm Hitchhiker of the Mind. I've enjoyed casting for you. I hope you enjoyed watching it. And this is uh, this is it for me for until the 11th. On the 11th, I'll be casting another game at the same time, right here on the same channel, of course. I'm Hitchhiker of the Mind. I'm out from the game is hard.